God from Romans chapter 16. Um, Romans chapter 16. And from verse 20. Now Paul writes and he says, I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, Paul is writing about things that are happening in the church and those causing divisions and um, they're speaking contrary to the doctrine that they were taught. So in other words, they're going against what they had been taught and they're using smooth speech, smooth words, flattering speech, uh, deceiving the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And then he says, Amen. The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And then he says, Amen. Now, when I first read that scripture years ago, I thought that God was going to do everything. He's going to crush Satan. I don't have to worry about anything. He's going to do all the work. I just have to say, Lord, deal with this issue, and then I'm okay. Well, we found that the Apostle Paul, when he prayed and said, Lord, can you remove this message of Satan that's bugging me? And the first two times that he prayed that, there was no answer. Nothing. The third time that he prayed, Lord, can you stop this uh, demonic force that is the message of Satan? Wherever they go, he causes a disruption. And Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And all of a sudden, Paul had a revelation. It's about time he took authority over that demonic force. God's grace is sufficient. And he's talking here about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But he is going to crush Satan under our feet. So it's about a time that we did something about what's happening. So often people go for years and years and years with the same problem. And God wants us to take our authority. He's given it to us. God will crush Satan under our feet. That's where he belongs, under our feet. Like one lady when I was talking about our authority in the Lord Jesus Christ, she said to me, don't speak so loud in this house. I said, why not? She says, the devil will hear you and he'll come after me. <laughs> I said, that's why I'm speaking so loud, so that he will be under your feet. You have authority. And you see, sometimes things just go and just go and go, and we kind of let things slide. You know, we'll deal with it later, we'll deal until it's just almost too late. And God wants us to crush Satan under our feet. And I have, um, and hopefully the guys online will be able to see what it is. Uh, we, I tried this screen, this is a, a, a two-way screen, so you can sh shine from the back, but the, cam the, the projector is not strong enough, okay? So you could hardly see it. So we had to shine it from front, but we'll get there, okay? The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, okay? Under your feet. That's where he belongs. We have authority over him. Jesus Christ won the authority and he gave it to the church. And it's time the church will take that authority by the grace of God and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and exercise the authority. Exercise the authority. But one thing we need to understand. And Jesus said that the, the, the prince of this world is coming. Coming against him. But he says, but he has nothing in me. 
He never had one point in his life that he could, that Satan could hold him fast and said, yeah, that you sin, that you said this and all that. He had nothing. He could touch nothing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not, no one could kill him. No one could destroy Jesus. He walked with divine authority. You see, sometimes people have this understanding. I don't know where they get it from, but it comes from false teachers and preachers uh, that we are to be trampled underfoot. That we are not just old Christians and we like worms and we must take and slap everybody, uh, let allow them to slap us, let allow them to put lawsuits and we just do nothing about it. Jesus never once allowed that except when he submitted to the Father and said, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not my will but your will be done. He never allowed Satan to slap him up. He never allowed Satan to have victory in any area of his life. And he's given us the victory to have that victory over our lives, over our circumstances, in Jesus' name. And not to be the ones being slapped up. Okay? Um, just after I was born again, my boss said, what is this uh, talking to people over the counter? I was in the motor trade, talking to people at the counter about Jesus. So um, I said, well, I'm excited about Jesus. He says, what do you mean? I said, I got born again. He says, what's that? I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he's transformed my life. And I have a joy and a peace I never had before. So he turns around and says, oh, so you're a Christian now? I said, yes. He says, well, so I can slap you and, you and you can't slap me back. I said, don't you dare. <laughs> The oak locked his office. He stayed in his office the rest of the day. Because <laughs> he knew what I did before to people, before I was born again. And uh, now he was pushing my buttons, okay? Well, let me tell you something. Um, we are not floor mates. And there is a time when we turn the other cheek. There is a time. But let me tell you something. When Paul was beaten and, and with many stripes in the Philippian jail and put in a Philippian jail, what did he do? They said, they realized he's a Roman citizen. He said, no, 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 no. You're not just going to let us, you're going to make a public apology. He took the law on his side. He was a Roman citizen. What they did to him was not legal. So there are times where you take your authority. And if you need to go to court or whatever it is, take the biggest guns that there are available. Take the most powerful uh, uh, attorney or whatever it is that you need. Ask God for divine wisdom. Let me tell you something. God will give you the sword to destroy the enemy. And what Paul was talking about, these people were coming against the word of God. God says, I'll give you the victory. God will crush the enemy under your feet. But now where does this crushing come from? Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between you, that's the serpent who beguiled Eve, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And then he says, it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The very first prophecy of victory, because Adam had sold out to Satan. And God gave a promise and a prophecy that took 4,000 years to come to pass. 4,000 years it took for man to gain the authority back that he had lost through sin. 4,000 years. His seed, her seed, will bruise, will crush your head. And that's exactly the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ. The prophetic word, the word that became flesh, that dwelt among us. That word who was with God and who was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with us. The word was God. In the beginning, right in the beginning, God was there. The purpose of God was to bring back that victory for every one of us. And we'll crush his heel. Victory over everything that Satan has performed and done over all his works. God wants us to take that victory. It's ours. That victory is being given to us. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. And it's not about saying, okay, Lord, yes, my problems, and just throw them up to God and walk off and walk away. There may be some things God wants us to do and to work out. The scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, 
In the temptation of Jesus, Satan says something to Jesus that is very, very interesting. And many times we miss it. And here it is, if you can read it from there. And the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed him the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to Jesus, all this power I will give you and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me and, and to whomsoever I will give it. If you therefore will worship me, it all shall be yours. He says, it was delivered to me. That word delivered is surrendered. It was surrendered over to him. When? When Adam decided to choose to believe the lie and acknowledge that, that day is when he opened the floodgates of hell. He opened the, the gates of hell. Death. God said, in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will die. So the moment that Adam ate of that fruit, disobeying God, that's when the floodgates of hell was opened. And man became subject unto Satan. And God prophesied and said, it's not going to be forever. Because her seed will destroy your head. Will take you out. Jesus answered and said obviously to him, <clears throat> Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and only him shall you serve. Now, in Romans 5 verse 9, 19, it says, For by one man's disobedience, you see, there's the key word, is by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, many are made righteous. The obedience. You see, the scripture says Jesus was even obedient unto death. That's how obedient he was. When he faced, uh, in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, when he was in the garden facing uh, this cup that he was about to drink, this cup of the, the, the punishment of death, the punishment of all the sin of the world, which is laid on him. He said to the Father, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He was obedient even unto death, so that he could give us the victory. He always had uh, authority over Satan. But he had to bring man back in authority over all the works of the darkness. That we can crush and trample underfoot all of the works of the enemy. Now, Romans 16, uh, 6 verse 16 says, Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are. To whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. These people that say, don't worry about uh, sin, uh, God has forgiven us past, present, future sins, we can just carry on, the Lord loves us, we are the apple of His eye, we're doing all this. <coughs> Paul warned the church and he said, listen, whoever you healed yourself, servants to obey, His servant you are. And we know that the scripture talks that the sons of disobedience are controlled by the spirit in the world of Satan. That is working in the difference in the world. So Jesus was totally obedient even unto death. And that's why the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. That same spirit. The moment we are continually in disobedience, disobeying with the spirit. There's the, the spirit that is working. And you can try and trample Satan underfoot. And if he's got a foothold, he's not going to go anywhere. So God wants us to make sure that we have authority, that we walk in righteousness and peace and victory and authority. And in this life today, it's time that we listen to what the Spirit of God has to say. And when, when things come our way, sometimes it looks so good. It looks too good to be true. It is too good to be true. Watch out for the deception that comes in our lives. Now, Jesus had to be a partaker of flesh and blood. He had to be partakers of flesh and blood. And this is the reason in Hebrews 
chapter 2, verse 14. Since the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Through death, it wasn't good enough that he could just shed a little bit of blood and say, okay, put it on the altar and everyone's cleansed. It had to be his life force had to be poured out for each one of us. Through death, he then destroyed him that had the power of death, and that is the devil. Who had the power of death? The devil. Where did he get the power from? Adam said. He opened the door. So Adam had the power of death and gave it over to Satan when he sinned and, <clears throat> and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now that word destroy means to set at naught. Jesus Christ has set Satan's authority at naught, at zero, against each one of us. That's what the scripture says. But you see, if we don't understand it, if we don't know that we have authority over the works of darkness, then we're just going to accept it. I heard a, um, a lady saying the other day, oh, all these things that God puts on us, all this tribulation, all this persecution makes us better people. Well, I can't see that in Scripture. But I know that Jesus said, you will face tribulation in this life, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we need a, a renewing of our minds to understand who we are, what we have in Christ Jesus, the victory that He's given, and then He gave it to us. He gave us the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we have the authority, but if we are not going to bind the things on earth, it's not going to happen. God is going to crush Satan under our feet when we take our authority and say, that's enough. That is enough right now. Father, give me divine wisdom what to do in this circumstance. To stand up for who we are in Christ Jesus and not allow these things to happen. Not allow poverty, sickness, death to come about. We have been given authority over the power of Satan. Destroy his works. Set him at north. Death and sin shall not have dominion over us. The sting of death is gone. There is, we will all die. Okay, we will all die unless the rapture happens. We will die. But you know what? The sting is gone. The fear of death is gone. Because we know where we're going. And if we don't know where we're going, we need to make sure and have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. On the, in the completed work and what he's done. So Satan's gonna, uh, God is going to bruise Satan under your feet. So let's take that authority and do it. The ministry of the Apostle Paul was very, it can be summed up very, very much in one scripture or one word that God gave to Paul. And that is this word. In Acts chapter 26, verse 18, the ministry was given to Paul to go to the Gentiles to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. To turn them from darkness to light and to turn them from the power of Satan to God. To turn them from the, that word power is authority. He has authority over everyone that is in darkness, over everyone that has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But he does have no authority over any believer in Jesus Christ. You see, John, uh, the Apostle John wrote, and he said, that he that is born of God sins not. And it says, and the wicked one touches him not. He that is born of God. The wicked, so how come he's touching people's lives? Because we've allowed things to happen in our lives. We've done things contrary to scripture and allowed things to happen in our lives because of a lack of knowledge. We don't know everything, but as we come to know the truth and as we come to know the, the authority that we have in Christ, it's time to trample Satan underfoot and say, that's enough. No more. That's enough right now in Jesus' name. And he's delivered us from the power of Tron to turn from the power of darkness to the light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith 
that is in me. Ephesians 2 verse 2, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. We don't have to longer walk in that power, in that authority of Satan and allowing him to just run across our lives. Take your authority, take your victory and stand fast in whatever you have. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, not be walked over, that you may be able to stand. Stand therefore, stand it's, uh, continually in that. It says stand your ground, stand your ground. And the whole armor of God, what are we shod with the feet? Of the preparation of the gospel of peace. So when we know who we are in Christ, we, have, we can stand strong in the Lord in the power of His might. And we can begin to trample underfoot all of those things, those works of darkness that have come against us. Trample them underfoot. Now, do you think it happens in a day or a month or a year? No. But some of the things do. And yet, if you see Paul's life, all of the destruction that came against him, all of the persecution... All of the times, some of it he opened the door to. And you can read that in the book of Acts. I can show you if you want to see it. But he opened the door. But everything about Paul, he always would turn around and say, hang on, uh, this is the truth. And he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the book of Acts, he says, I'll even die for him. Without Christ, without the power of God, he was prepared to die. And they totally realize it's through Christ. Through the strength of Christ, He did. I can do. Not just say, well, Lord, you do it for me. I can do all things. What are we? Workers together with Him. So there are works that we need to be doing. There are things that we need to be doing. One of it is to trample underfoot. To jump on the head of Satan. On those accusations that come against us. Those things that say, uh, you'll never make it, don't worry. Take what God has promised in His Word. Not the way we feel. Not the way other people say who we are. But we'll know who we are in Christ Jesus. And walk in that victory. We are no longer under the prince of the power of the air. We are under the prince of the world. The prince of peace. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And He said He'll be with us even unto the end. He'll be with us through every circumstance, every situation. But let's pray and ask God for divine wisdom. Lord, what must I do in this circumstance? Must I turn the other cheek? Or must I give the, 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 the word, the heaviest, the word is like a hammer, the Bible says. And I don't believe it's a little, you know that little tinker hammer? Okay. Uh, when it talks about a hammer, it's the power of God. Amen. And it's about time we use the power of God. In the authority that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. In Colossians chapter 1.13, he says, He has delivered us from the power, the authority of darkness, and conveyed us or transferred us into the kingdom of His Son. We've been delivered from that power. We've been delivered. We're no longer under that authority. We've been delivered from that power of darkness. And we transferred into the kingdom of of the Son of His love, or the His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. Turn from darkness. Don't allow it. Don't accept it. Turn from every... Jesus made it very clear <clears throat> that He said, the wicked one, the thief, comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. So there's something being taken away. It's not gone. Like some people say, yeah, well, the Lord took my, my, my child because the Lord was lonely. Hey, man. That's not true. With long life, the scripture says, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. There are scriptures that said that, that, that we shouldn't do something that's going to end our lives soon. And with long life, and that's 70 plus, Okay, three score and ten plus. That's the long life God has promised us. So if there's something happened in people's lives. Uh, they've done things in their lives that their body obviously just doesn't. A friend of ours just died. I think he was seventy-three or seventy-four. 
Okay? And uh, his wife said, she's going to cremate his body and send it to Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> because he drank so much Coca-Cola. Um, two liters a day, you know, uh, and plus, whatever. Okay. But, um, yeah, but you, you can't drink too much Coca-Cola unless you're less white. Anyway, <clears throat> that's the new thing that they're throwing out there. We've been delivered from the power of darkness. Don't accept it. But don't say things. Don't open the door. And say things. The other day I was saying, um, Brenna said, uh, you know, something, and I said, oh, I forgot to do that. And then I said it again. The second day, I forgot. And then I thought, oh, what am I saying? What am I saying? I forgot. So now when I say, I remembered, I remember. <laughs> I'm not going to accept that. Sometimes I have to go to the place where I had the thought. And then the thought, I catch up with the thought and then I, I remember. But I'm not saying, you see, it's simple things that we think is nothing. Um, our friend, Alan, the other night, said, uh, he forgot something, he says, oh, that's old time, it's coming on. Do you remember this? Oh, no, no, I picked it up. Okay, I, I, I've sharpened the, the, I've sharpened the axe because I've said too many things that have caused too many troubles in my life. Let's not give Satan any authority. None at all. So, in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8 it says, None of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't know that through death he destroyed him that had the power of death. They didn't know. In fact, next week I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share on the strategy that Jesus used. And he told the strategy in the word. He spoke it and Satan never saw it. Satan didn't know. Didn't know what he was doing. And he spoke it out. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 6 it says, How be it, we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. That's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 6. And that's how they're supposed to be in our lives. Zero. Having zero authority. Having zero impact in our lives. Paul came to a point in his life and he said, The Lord has delivered me out of all of my tribulations. And it's when we come to know the victory that we have in Christ, and we stand firm, stand on the Word, regardless of if we see it happening or not. Take the Word of God and stand, having done all, stand. Stand on what the Scripture says. Have that feet shod with the preparation of the Gospel of Peace. In 1 John 3 verse 8, it says, He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest. To destroy the works of the devil. Why? Because he needed to destroy them? No. Because he wanted to transfer the victory to us. That we can stand in the full. We're going to read the word of victory. More than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Who loved us and gave himself for us. Destroy means to, he spoke about loosen. Loosen the captive. Set the captives free from that bondage. Remember when Jesus came to the, the lady that had uh, was bent over, buckled, she could not straighten up for 18 years. Jesus turned to her on a Sabbath day, Nochal, and caused a whole big stir. But he said to her, woman, you are loosed. Of your infirmity. She had a spirit of infirmity. A demonic force that kept her in bondage. And he said you loosed. That's the same word. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Loose us from the, the works of the devil. That we take our authority against what Jesus has done. Against the works of darkness. Against Satan. Women you are loosed from your infirmity. And when they complained at the Sabbath day. He said to them. Uh, in verse 16, Luke 13, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abram, whom Satan has bound, 
Who bound her? Satan bound her. Not whom God wanted to prove something, whom Satan has bound. See, these 18 years be loosed from this bondage or from this bond on the Sabbath day. And then they were ashamed about it. God wants us loosed. Loosed from every work of darkness. And then we go through and look at what's in our lives. That um, what has been holding us captive. What has been hindering us through our lives. Poverty, sickness. Uh, he came to steal, kill and destroy. To wipe out our lives. To wipe out families. To cause division. All of these things. We have authority over those works of darkness. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Serpents and scorpions is the messengers of Satan that come against us, things that, that try and attack us, whatever. And you know what the scripture says? For the for the spirit of heaviness, what are you supposed to do? Go and hover and crawl and plead, God deliver me, God deliver me, help me. What does the scripture say we should do? Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So, and you don't just oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus is Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. And all the time that you're doing that, you, and you don't sing, even though you don't want to do it, you're doing something powerful and you're dancing before the Lord. You're trampling that thing underfoot. That thing that Satan comes against you with. That thing that Satan brings to, to hold you captive. That wants to bind you and says, oh, you've never made it. <clears throat> that very thing is what you're standing on and saying, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And when Paul and Silas, even though they were miserable, after being beaten, their backs were bleeding at midnight. They sang, they prayed and sang praises. And then they got the beat. And I think the Lord got the beat too. And then there was an earthquake. And God delivered them. You see, don't accept. God will uh, bruise Satan under your head. Don't accept Satan's uh, bringing defeat, bringing destruction against our lives. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. So let God give you wisdom. Lord, what must I do in this circumstance? What must I do against poverty? What must I do against sickness? What must I do in this? Lord, thank you. I believe and receive the victory through Jesus Christ. And then begin to worship and praise God and trample that underfoot. And every time Satan brings it, begin to dance, hallelujah, praise the Lord. There was a guy that phoned me up and said, listen, if you want to see me, I'm in hospital. I said, uh, uh, how come you're in hospital? He says, well, um, uh, I want to be delivered from, from alcohol. And, um, you know, and so I booked myself in. So I got to the door and I saw his name. And, and then I heard this bouncing, bouncing around inside. And yeah, he was. And he had the DTs. His body was shaking. So what he did is he just used that action to trample underfoot. And he just said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. And they all thought he was crazy. The nurse walks past. And he's just going. They said, oh, he's got the DTs. But this oak is just praising God and victory. And that was, I think, uh, about 40, almost 40 years ago. He still delivered. He still set free. He still rejoices in the Lord because he was delivered completely by the grace of God. Took the victory. Jesus gave us the victory. Let's take it. Take the victory. Take the armor of God. Take everything that God has blessed us with and take the victory and let God, by His Spirit, empower us to trample underfoot every work of darkness. Then, whom the Son of God sets free, is free indeed. We're going to stand and we're going to declare the word. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Right, Heavenly Father, 
We make this declaration of faith over us, our families, and inspired life family. With faith and boldness, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Lord of glory, the Lord and Master of our lives. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, which is, which was, and is to come, the Almighty. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You've given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, and all of your promises in Him are yes and amen. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Deliver us from every evil work and preserve us unto your heavenly kingdom. To you be glory and dominion forever and ever. Our God is a wall of fire around us, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. The Lord makes us the head and not the tail. We gain up and are down, forwards and not backwards. We are the apple of our Father's eye and have His divine favor in all that we are and do. People come from the north, the south, the east and the west to experience the greatness and power of the Lord Jesus Christ and inspired life ministries. Sinners come to repentance. The lukewarm are set alight. The captives set free and the sick are healed in Jesus' name. By His stripes, we are healed from all sickness and disease. We are strong in the Lord, empowered by the Holy Spirit, raised up mighty of valor to the full measure of the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by His grace and authority, we now reign in this life, doing mighty exploits in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father supplies all of our needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Our needs are many. We are out of debt, and there's plenty more to put in store. So by the grace of God, we set ourselves in agreement with the Word of God in and over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.